Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can convert your responsive website into an Android app. It's not really complicated, I'm going to use Android Studio for that and let's see how we can do it. So first of all, uh, the prerequisite is you need to have a website of course and it should be a responsive website. And what do I mean by responsive website is like this so whenever it's opened in the mobile view like this it's kind of a mobile view it should you know be mobile friendly right so you can see the menu uh, you know contracts according to the mobile view and then you can browse to the menu like this okay and when I click something you can see this okay so this is my website which I want to convert to an Android app which is Easy Online Converter. If you want you can visit this website for converting uh, many values to another values. And now let's see how we can uh, convert this website into an Android app. So first of all open your Android Studio. Uh, if you don't know how you can download and install Android Studio. I will paste a link of a video in which I have shown you how you can download and install uh, Android Studio on your Windows operating system. So open your Android Studio and uh, create a new Android project and in here give the name to your project. I'm going to name it as uh, Easy Online Converter and I'm going to click next and uh, right now leave everything as uh, default. You can choose the last one or latest version but uh, it may be uh, not compatible with all the you know devices so I prefer to use for now 4.1 Jelly Bean which covers 73 percent or 78 percent of devices okay now click next and choose the blank activity click next and uh, leave everything as default if you want you can change the name of your main activity but I don't want this so I will uh, click finish now so now our project is created and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to remove this uh, hello world uh, component from here and then what we are going to do is in the palette section here we will search for the web view so search for web view and drag and drop into your activity here okay and now what we are going to do next is we will uh, just select our web view and go to the properties here and we will just choose fill parent and the height also layout height also fill parent okay and you can just resize it like this now next step is to go to your uh, java folder here and uh, open your main activity dot java and in here first of all we are going to declare a web view uh, variable so just write private web view so just search for web view and give a name to it for example web view okay and now once you have created your variable just copy your variable and go to your uh, on create method here and just here just paste your web view and then we are going to call this web view by uh, you know casting it so what we need to do just give a bracket here and then just write web view and then after outside the bracket just write find view by id so it will find your uh, component using your id and then just write r dot id dot your uh, web view id which is web view in our case now here you may be confused because your uh, component id is also web view and uh, your uh, private variable is also web view with the same spelling so for example i can uh, change it to my web view so that it will be clear which is what okay so just do it here now the second step is uh, just uh, create a variable one more variable which is web view settings and just uh, name it as web view settings is equal to then just take your my web view and then call a method called get settings here the next step is to take your web settings from here and then 
call a method called set javascript enabled is equal to true and what it's going to do is it's going to enable the javascript uh, in your uh, you know web view so whenever you use a website which is using javascript it's going to you know support this okay now next step is to take your uh, web view variable which is my web view in my case and then call a method called load url and in the double quotes give the url for your website so i will just copy the url of my website from here and paste it in these uh, double quotes okay now whenever you are using the web view in order to uh, give your device the permission to use internet you need to uh, change the manifest file from here so go to the manifest folder and open android manifest dot xml file from here and in here at the top you can create one more element here and you can uh, use this uh, uses permission attribute here and then you just need to choose the permission which we want to allow so in our case we want to choose uh, android permission for internet so just uh, search for this which is this one android permission internet and then close your element like this now once everything is done uh, we are going to test our app so just click this green button here and then it's going to run our app in the emulator provided by android studio to us so now our app is running on the emulator and uh, you can see this website uh, it's looking same as we have seen on the browser right now for example i will click one button here what it happens let's see so i'm going to just click this uh, check some calculator for example and let's see what happens when we do this so what happened is it's going to open this url in the browser and this we don't want we want that uh, whenever we uh, you know click some uh, you know option here it should be opened in your app itself right so we are going to correct this thing in a moment the second thing we want to add the functionality for the back button right so whenever we want to browse the page, pages uh, forward on backward then we want to uh, you know add the functionality for that and the last thing uh, you may observe here is the padding around your app so you can see a little bit of uh, margin is left here around your app which also we are going to remove let's see how we can do these things so to solve the first problem uh, we are going to go to once again to our main activity dot java file and in here we will take our my web view uh, variable and then we will call a method called set web view client and then we will just call new web view client okay and what this line of code will do is it's going to prevent uh, your uh, you know urls to open in the browser so whenever your uh, you know app is open and when you click some link it's not going to open this link in the web browser okay so this line is for that i'm going to minimize this thing so you can see better now to add uh, the back button functionality there is a predefined method here which we can call which is called on back press so just write on and it's going to show you this intellisense this press and select on back press and this is going to add this method here now whenever the back button is pressed and we are browsing our website we want that we will uh, you know go to the last page we have browsed so we will add a condition here and this condition is just take your uh, my web view first of all and then we will first of all check if we can go back so there is a method called can go back and it replies a boolean value so if in the app you can go back then it's going to return true and in this case what we will do we will go back so just take your uh, my web view uh, object and then call a method called go back so if you can go back you will go back else uh, you will exit the app so just write else 
and this line will be inside this else condition if you want you can add these uh, bracket but for one line you don't require but let's add it for the sanity so this is for uh, the back button functionality now the third thing was the padding extra padding if you want to remove this extra padding from here then go to your activity uh, underscore main dot xml file and in here in the top there are some properties related to these padding you can see here this padding left padding right padding top and padding bottom so these are the attribute which are responsible for adding the padding around your app but in our case we don't want this padding so we can remove these four attributes padding bottom padding top padding right and padding left and don't remove anything else so just remove these things and then save your code and then we are going to once again run our app okay so let's see what happens when we run our app so app is once again running and uh, let's click on uh, some of the button or some of the links here for example this uh, case converter and when I click on this case converter this time it's going to open inside the app this uh, link you can see it has opened uh, this uh, link inside your app it doesn't go to the browser to open this link here and let's browse uh, some more uh, links here and we will check the back button functionality after that so I'm going to click this checksum link and it opens this checksum and once again I'm going to open for example uh, this decimal binary hex converter from here and op it's opening this uh, URL right inside your app and when I press this back button from here it will go back to the last browsed page and once again go back and once again go back and then we are in the main home page of our app and now this time when you uh, click this back button it's going to uh, you know close this app right so in this way you can uh, you know convert your uh, website into uh, Android app now the thing which is remaining is you need to just create a APK file of uh, this app and then upload it on uh, Google Play or any other app store so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe and bye for now.